Smile, you're on candid camera. <laughs> 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 I'm the Godfrey. No. I'm the Godfrey. I'm the Godfrey. Gotta be shitting me. Jeez Louise, that was a battle. Something QA, 32, QA, 32, I would have thought this would have been Alcoa, I don't know, QA, quality assurance. Oh man. rivets aren't that hard to get out.
comes my dad. Mama's goes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's strong. There you go, all new. back drill for now and just like let them stick out or because I can't get the drill in here Thank <laughs> you. 
see what we got here. Yeah, that's a damn trip hazard. I'm gonna have to do something different there. Cut them off or something. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Too short. Too short. Oh, no. Oh, man. That's hell getting old. Where's the eight millimeter? All right. I think the door's gonna seal now by George. The rest of the skin will screw and glue back into place here with some uh, construction adhesive. Holy cow, that's like night and day. Oh man, that's exactly what I wanted.
foam didn't expand as much as I thought it would. Son of a bee. It's kind of good though, because very strange. Come here. So, uh, yeah, nice clean hole here. That worked really well. And what I wanted to show you is how I sprayed this foam in here with this void was closed. And um, the foam kind of expanded. But where it didn't expand, it left like a varnish on the, um, everywhere where it didn't expand. It's very interesting. Yeah, let me pull some of that out of there. It left like a varnish on the inside of the aluminum. I would have thought that that was entirely full of foam. And I would be wrong. So, um, got a nice clean hole. I was going to go buy one and five eighths hole saw. Dad said, don't do that. Just use my handy dandy fly cutter on my corded cordless 18 volt deep cycle marine battery cordless drill and cut the hole. So that's what I did. Got our springboard in here sitting in the box so I can solder these hot wires here. That probably doesn't make any sense at all. Where's that last one? So we have three circuits in this shelter. Um, there's the light circuit. There's the box where we found that Vietnamese note. That's gonna be for the TV and the PlayStation. And finally, we have one that I mounted up front that I originally planned to um, put fans on, two fans. It has USB ports to charge phones. Just trying to get this teased around here into a candy cane go around these um, screws on the vintage switches and that one's also tied into the exterior power takeoff for the lack of a better word so to solder these ends here just stuck a piece of board in under the breaker Tell you what, this butane soldering iron is the best thing I've ever purchased. You know, I have one of those Weller soldering irons, one of the really good ones. It's like 1300 watts. But you don't always have access to electricity out on the road, 1000 watts at that. Whatever it runs. Come on, take that solder. So I bought this butane soldering iron as a backup for an emergency when I'm out on the road. And as it turns out, it is extremely dependable. And I would recommend um, having one of those you can do electrical work anywhere you don't have to have power so that's pretty cool man so this is the main feed from the breaker it's gonna go up to the switches and then we have our three hots out to the circuits so I hope you can see what I'm doing here I'll try to move so you can see I will need a better screwdriver. Okay. So, my shore power feeds the breaker. So I have two inputs on the shore power switch here. Two inputs, one output. The output goes to the neutral bar and the feed on the breaker load center respectively 
the hot out of the breaker goes up to our three switch three circuit switches um, just like original they had the hot feed one of the switches and then they were all ganged together so we'll get this main hot in here truth we got the panel installed bugged in the only thing left to do here is to well wire this up which I'm gonna leave turned off and wire in the um, shore power but for now we're just going to uh, turn the power on uh, flip it to battery input and hit the breaker Oh, hmm. This will fit flat here. Ah, looking pretty good to me. It was in here like, wow. It was in here like this before crooked. Now we got her sitting pretty flat there. Flat enough to sell. All right, what well, a rigging. That's my name, the uh, Riggin. Johnny Riggin Rossman. <laughs> That's funny. All right, folks, we're back. It's been a few days, but I'm having a little trouble with my arc fault interrupter. Namely, it trips as soon as I turn the power on. So, I ummed everything out. I don't have any shorts anywhere, and all the joints are soldered, and everything seems tight. I don't know what my deal is here. This is a, uh, this gasket was on this. This is a piece of inner tube. It's somebody, a homemade gasket. Somebody made in the service. Thought that was pretty cool. Put it, try to put it back on there the way it was. Which was this way. No, nope, nope, nope. Wrong, wrong, wrong. This way. When I took this off, this was all wet down here. I mean, it wasn't here, it was down where it was originally, but this portion, this was all wet and this was corroded back here. Couldn't figure out why. I was like, what the hell's going on? And I realized, what, well, I said to myself, well, where can the water be coming in? And then realized that it was coming in these four boat holes. It was weeping in through capillary action um, this lettering here was keeping the bolt out a little bit, keeping it cockeyed in there. Uh, same with down here, this boss here where the, uh, chain screw goes, which I broke that bolt, oh, snapped that screw off, by the way. So I had to draw that out and retap it, 1032. But this 
boss here was keeping the screw from going all the way in flat. You can see now it does because I took the Dremel to it. Might be easier just to since we have a little bit of work time with the coking, I'll just coke them like that. Mm. Not what I wanted. That's a little better. That's better. This way is always a struggle. Oh, I just need a little persuasion, you see? There. Okay. Now, um, now what? I don't have a healthy helper now to hold the wrench for me. Uh, take five. Uh, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere in there. I think I have the wrench. Just tease this gasket back up where it needs to be. I think I have the wrench on this upper left one here. Suppose we don't need to kill this. Mm. 
now we just need to do this three more times. because it's held in place by that boss. This one of them. Yeah. I think that's it. I think we got her. I'm happy with that. Just get a um, just gonna say get a wet rag. I just I'll just guess I'll just wipe this off here with my fingers. I had to drill and retap this hole before I put this on here, because there's no way I'd be able to drill and retap that, drill that piece of brass out and retap that with this in place and caulked in and everything. And I didn't feel like taking it off in the near future. So I just went ahead and drilled that out and tapped it. And then um, I'll have to go get a 1032 little button head screw. Then I could put that back in. Apple products, am I right? you Siri okay alrighty I don't know what's going on maybe I just can't use an arc fault ground fault breaker with the blue eddy I don't know maybe it's reacting off of the um, my hypothesis is that this is somehow reacting with the inverter frequency in the blue eddy and it's tripping it as soon as um as soon as i put power to it what i what really grinds my gears is doing unnecessary work because you know i have a little heart set on have a ground fault arc fault in this box and I followed this path all the way to the end. I stretched the blocks out, did all this custom work to make that circuit breaker fit. And it turns out I just shoved an old 40 amp breaker that was in it to begin with back in it. 
I mean, I owned everything out. There's no, there are no faults anywhere in this wiring. Um, I took one of these testers, the wiring's correct. Everything is correct. Find that last screw there, motor mouth. There it is. You watch this screw won't go in, will it? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, that's par for the course this week. That's what really bothers me is doing unnecessary work. I mean, I could have just put this thing together and wired it up and already be working on the springs or something, you know, I'm trying to get the axle back under this thing instead of taking this detour. And with that, we're going to end this cluster of a video for the day. And thank you for watching me just fumble around with a bunch of junk for an hour. And we'll see you next time. Hopefully we'll make some better progress next video. Hey, it's not all peaches and rainbows here up in the holler. So, <laughs> oh man, I got to go make a coffee. See you next time. Keep on jeeping on. <laughs> what a mess. So I ran into a little snafu here. Uh, that's where I want to run my solar wiring. You see I already ran my hot wire for my photovoltaic panels. I wanted to run it, the gland right here. This is the front left, front driver's side corner of the shelter here. And I got up on the roof and I was looking. And that's right where the biggest roof patch I have is right there. So there's no pop, there's just no way I would be able to put a, a pass through gland up there and have it seal correctly. So I said to myself, well, what? What can I do here? I'll have to buy another box and put it here in the middle and move that gland over. And then I got to looking and you know this, these wire mold boxes and joints and all that stuff, they take up a specific area, surface area, I guess I should say. In other words, I will be able to I'm pretty sure I'll be able to take that box and the backing plate off and take this 90 off and switch them around and and not have to modify anything here in other words so I think I can take this box and move it over here and have my gland pass through right here in the center in the front We'll see. <laughs> okay, so my hypothesis seems to be correct. I can replace that backing plate with a 90. And I can replace this 90 with the backing plate for my entry gland. Look at that. Perfect. That's going to work out really well. Just make sure it's nice and perpendicular to the wall and I'll, I'll be happy something like that okay
when I'm laying there and I look up at this, am I going to say, man, that thing's crooked. Oh, that looks pretty good, actually. Alrighty. Okay, it's been a little while, guys, but this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to bug this AFI into a cable. This is just bugged together here to prove or disprove whether the Blue Eddy's inverter is tripping the arc fault in my shelter. So we have it bugged together. We have it run down to a... Uh, do not try this at home. <laughs> this was just something that was out in the shed. And uh, this works at home. So I know it's not, the breaker is not defective. So moment of truth, turn the Blue Eddy on. And there we are. We trip it, it trips. Watch where you touch this thing. Reset the breaker. It's reset. We should have power here. Plug this in. There we are. We got power at the receptacle. The breaker's not tripping in the Blue Eddy, so we know the Blue Eddy inverter is not putting out in a frequency that the AFI detects and trips it. So the problem is over here in my wiring. So we'll have to change a couple things, try to get the AFI to work. Um, that's gonna be for another day. So uh, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you when we see you. And uh, in closing, we lost one of our convoy family from the time I began this video <clears throat> until now which is um, the 20th of October, 2023. We lost one of our convoy family, Bernie Field. So, uh, well, that's rough. Because, you know, Renee and I really, really, really like the fields. And um, his brothers who you hear in every single, the beginning of every single one of my videos, Kenny Field. Uh, great guy, practically famous in the MVPA, and uh, he, he's going to be sorely missed. But hopefully he's in a better place and um, not in any pain anymore. So, 
Yeah, I'm going to dig through my archive and see what I can come up with, see if I have any good uh, clips of Bernie in subsequent videos. Maybe I'll kick off with an old Bernie vid. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do that, though, because all my clips, after I post them, after I put my videos together, all on my phone, after that episode is up into the interwebs, <laughs> It goes into a into a hard drive so but I edit all my videos on the iPhone so I would almost have to take a clip and and download it to the iPhone I don't know how I'm gonna do it but I'm gonna try all right guys keep on jeeping on we'll see you out there somewhere sometime somehow and uh, enjoy every day like it's gonna be your last one that's my advice for you see you next time <laughs>